Guys, welcome back. This is Eric the Sturt playing the monster inside. I'm gonna start this. It's supposed to be an audio visio no visual novel, but we all know how things go. My head pounded, ears still ringing slightly. Some of the worst nightmares I've had in years left me feeling like I've been punched in the jaw. But just like any other day, I dragged myself to the office. There was another notice on my door from the mayor of Vinetti's office. Permits out of date. They didn't like me much and were trying to down me in paperwork. It was a slow month. Weeks since I've had any real cases to do to work on. So I passed the time pacing the office, smoking, snaring at the mirror in the corner, slavely covered with an old bedsheet. <laughs> what? I don't dare to look at my own reflection. I'm too afraid of what I might see. Afraid someday I might have to face what I really am. The girl came in so quietly I nearly choked on my cigarette. Mister, please, you gotta help me, mister. Calm down now. Sit and talk slow. Okay, thanks. It's just no one will listen to me. Just tell me your tale. I'm listening. She eyed me, which is a dash of suspicion, as I tossed back a handful of pills and chased them with a swing of whiskey. I could tell this might take a while. Her name was Lily. She told me she was his mistress. The man all over the newspapers, the infamous banker, Mr. Reginald Franksmarth. Mr. Franks, maybe Fernsworth, I don't know, I'm just going to say Franksworth, was dunk, was a drunk, flamfering bastard. But this girl seemed genuinely concerned that he had recently gone missing. Less concerned about the fact that Mr. Franksworth's wife had just turned up dead in Central Park two nights ago. Lily, you don't understand. He, he just couldn't have done it. He hated his wife, but he just couldn't have killed her. Everyone thinks it was him. And no one believes him. He's gotta be in trouble. I ain't saying I believe you, but what makes you think he's in danger? Really? Well, mister, um... Jack. You can just call me Jack. Jack? Whoever did this to his wife must have been the one who took him. He would have never left without me. He promised me. I'm sure Mr. Franksworth promised this poor girl a lot of things. Billy, please, the cops won't listen to me and they want to bring him in on the charges. You gotta prove it wasn't him before they find him. Honestly, I don't. I doubt they are in too much of a hurry. Franksworth had pro practically the entire police force in his deep pockets. Probably why they haven't found much on yet. If they found him and brought him in, it would be due to public pressure. Sometimes a mob with pitchforks is more dangerous than one man with money. You got my curiosity, but you might not like what I find. Oh, thank you, Mr. Jack. Thank you, but please, he's be careful. I don't think this was just any murderer or kidnapper. I think it... I think it was a... A beast. Beast. The word struck me funny. Like when your jar, your elbow, and a hard corner. Not a word many use these days. Except in hush whispered and bedtime stories for children. Oh, they were real enough. They just got better at hiding, controlling their unseemly urges. But I hadn't seen any monsters in nearly 15 years, back when I was still a cop myself. Well, that's an interesting theory. I just have a feeling about it. Something tells me you can get to the bottom of it. You're good at this sort of thing. Sure. Can't see how busy I am with the cases. I replied a little too harshly. Sarcasm was in my suit. 
I reassured her some more and sent her on her way. I didn't want to scare her, but I wanted but I warned her before she left to keep the doors locked and call me if she sees anything suspicious. I didn't know if she was in danger herself, better safe than sorry. That night I made my way down to Central Park. It was a long shot, but maybe there was something the cops had missed. The scene was already picked clean by the cops a couple days ago, but I've got a knack for finding things that others overlook. A knack more of a symptom of a condition other less useful symptoms I've kept in check, but for the time being, my keen sense of smell would come in handy. It was faint, but I could smell it before I even approached the police line. The scent was less of a thing and more of an emotion. Seduction. A strangely familiar scent. I expected the scent of a trepidation or maybe even outright fear, but Mr. Francois seemed to have the height of pleasure when she left this world. Brought new meaning to the crime of passion. Pushing the thought of my mind, it was time to get down to business. Muddy footprints everywhere, difficult to pick out anything from the prints the cop left behind in their haste. But cops don't wear $2,000 pair of Kernokos. It looked like Miss, Mr. Frinksworth was out there that night and walked away on his own two feet. A burn mark on a nearby tree caught my eye. I ran my finger along its length and felt a chill down my spine. This wasn't just any burn mark. This is the mark of an ancient magic. It's doubtful the cops would have picked up on it. Could Lily have been right? Something unnatural was at play here. But I was no help, no stranger to the scene. Oh, sorry. But I was no stranger to the strange. After looking around for a while longer, I realized the park had given up all it was hiding from me. So I trudged back to my apartment, and my head hit my pillow like it owed me money. The next morning, I was reeling from another bout of ghoulish nightmares. But I tried to hide my discomfort when I saw Lily was already standing outside my office. She waited wordlessly as I unlocked the door, ripped down another notice from the mayor's office, and I motioned for her to step inside, extremely afraid of what I might say. She finally worked up the courage to ask. So, so what did you find? Unnatural? What do you mean? The spell mark really seen in these days, but unmistakable. What does that mean? What about Reggie? Do you know where he might be? Found his footprints. Sounds like he's got out safely. My tone was indifferent toward her. As I turned and grabbed a bottle from my desk drawer, dryness in my throat made it difficult to swallow my meds. But you don't know where he went? Do you think the news this morning is related? What news is that? Haven't you heard? Nope. Rough night followed by a rough morning. They found the police chief's wife dead down by the docks. They say it happened last night. Let me guess. Chief Amido is missing too. My face might have betrayed a hint of satisfaction as she confirmed my suspicions. But it faded quickly. Amido was a shit cop. And a shit chef. He was half the reason I left the force. But now his wife was dead, and I had more questions than I did the day before. The gears of my head started to spin, which wasn't helped by the splitting pain at my temples. I told Lily, I need time to work. And she slightly dejected wanting more answers than I could provide. That night, after the cops had cleared out of the docks, I would slip down and see what I could uncover. Concerning Mrs. Amidos, 
ultimately demise. The cold air saw, smelled strongly of salt and oil, and... Could it be? That smell again, like someone had a bottled perfume arousal and used it as perfume. It hit me like a long-forgotten memory, but the sensational fumes soon gave way to a rush of adrenaline. I knew exactly what the scent reminded me of, and that scared me more than not knowing. I looked down at my hands, shaking the nightmares, the headaches. No, I was better. Now, reformed. I had to focus, no jumping to conclusions, follow the evidence. Well, there, just there, the smallest piece of purple fabric, torn and caught in a splinter of a cardboard. A splinter of a board. The police report didn't say anything about it, it was purple. And it was certainly of a quality that you wouldn't expect down here. Didn't see too many high society types around the flaunting royal purple threads. Red Phoenix cigarettes. Same shitty brand I smoke every day. Everyone's got their vice. I pulled out my own pack of reds and lit up. I couldn't already... I could already feel in her headache coming on, but looking over... The waves seemed to help me forget. The cold helped me push down the uncomfortable thoughts that had been bubbling on top of my brain. I honestly don't remember the walk back to the office. Apparently, I spent the night in my e easy chair. The air from the docks lingered on my clothes. It was still dark out. No, I checked the clock. How long had I been out? Had I really slept through the entire day? Newspaper was sitting underneath the door... And as I stood to fetch it, I nearly fell over. A wave of nausea hit me like a ton of bricks. I steadied myself and regained my composure. But before I even picked up the paper, I could already read the headlines. Mayor missing. Wife found dead. Bum, bum, bum. Two cases as a quiz. The third as a pattern. The cops would become asking questions soon. They knew I had a history of antagonizing all the victims. I stumbled to my desk and slammed back three days' worth of inhibitor pills. I couldn't take any chances. I had to investigate the scene to be sure. I threw on my jacket and went out to the door. Lily caught me off guard on the other side. Jack, where are you off to? I've been trying to reach you all day. I'm sorry, Lily, but I don't have time to talk. I have to go. Okay, but we need to talk when you get back. Stay safe. She gave me a soft kiss on the cheek as I rushed off. Part of me wanted to stay and tell her it would be okay. But it would be a lie. The alley was located just behind the high-rise apartments where the mayor Veneni and his wife lived. I could tell the police were spooked now. The crime scene was even sloppier than the last. They haven't even bothered to submit the trash into evidence. Why wouldn't they at least look through the dumpster? It seemed untouched. No one wants to do their dirty work. But I know how to find the good stuff. It really doesn't take long if you know where to look for. Lightweight bags usually mean someone was dumping documents. If you're lucky, they don't bother to shred them. Jackpot. Shell company, shady st stock trades, bribes. I knew Mayor Vanity was crooked, but this is unbelievable. And there was more. Letters between Mayor Vanini and the Chief of Mayo talking about me? How they were trying to get me to shut down. They didn't like me snooping around crime scenes all the time. Well, they weren't here to stop me snooping around on this one. Vanini's car, if he's still alive, why wouldn't he have left in his car? Didn't make any sense. I honestly wasn't too motivated to find him, but the stakes were too high and... My bet was edging towards the unthinkable. As I searched around for anything that might assert my fears, I caught that sun again. It overwhelmed him into my other senses with undaunting pleasure. It was intoxicating, a weapon used on the weak willed, a weapon I knew all too well. Thought it had been many years since I had used it. Though it had been many years since I used it. Was there another like me? Was I being framed? Was it possible, was it? I was taking my inhibitors. I was reformed. But the nightmares, the headaches, the memory lapse. 
I couldn't even trust myself. I started walking back out the alley when something shiny caught my eye. A watch? Not just any watch, though. My watch. How long has my wrist been bare? Surely I just dropped it when I first came down the alley. I checked the chime just before I left the office, didn't I? Or had I used the wall clock? I couldn't be sure. Couldn't be sure of anything. So I ran. I don't know why I ran back to the office. The cops would probably show up any minute to knock on the door. Knock the door down and cart me away. They would put it together before long. Maybe it'd be best for everyone if I simply faced my own reflection. But Lily was still there waiting for me. Jack, what's wrong? You look like you've seen a ghost. My own ghost came back to haunt me from the past. You're not making any sense, Jack. Come, sit down. You don't understand. You're not safe around me. I took a good last look at her. As I prepared to shove her out the door, I noticed she was wearing the same thing she had when she first came to my office three days ago. A beautiful purple dress. Odd that I hadn't really noticed before. But it made her seem out of place, out of time. And it was frayed around the edges, torn in places. My chair caught my fall as my knees failed me. It was you. You are the monster. Succubus. Oh, Jack. We are one and the same. You and I. We are both monsters. I'm simply more monster with myself. There's no such thing as reformation. Those pills you are taking only make you dull. Beasts like us should never suppress our true natures. As you have incubus. Oh, bum 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 bum. Those men were probably dead too now, I figured. She probably took them to her lair. Excuse me. Blah! Those men were probably dead too now, I figured. She probably took them to her lair and harvested their seed. So you've done all this just to wake me up? You could say that. Though it seems enough just to have you doubt yourself. You believe you're still capable of such horrors. Which means deep down you probably are. You can't escape it. Now I need you to complete the de deed. You took my watch, messed with my head? Oh, don't act like I didn't do you a favor. Those men hated you and wanted you gone, and now that they're gone... I mustered the strike to stand again, moving casually to the window by the corner. She was right about one thing. I was dull, weak compared to her. If I refused her and she attacked me, I was a dead man. I had to keep her talking. I've never met a succubus who seduces and kills women. Oh, please. Such a 14th st century stereotype. I don't discriminate when it comes to the pleasure of the flesh. But I knew, do, st do still need a uh, incubus like yourself. <clears throat> to take the tainted seed I harvest from this awful men and plant it among the fertile masses for me. I'm tired of draining my lovers just to survive. I'm ready to settle down and start a family. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> that mechanical laugh maniacal laughter Vicious and myself carefully making sure she was looking in my direction sorry but I'm not your guy with a quick flare of my wrist I ripped off my old bed sheet off the corner mirror Lily was blinded by her own reflection and sucked into the mirror with a painful monstrous scream trapped Shielding my own eyes, I pulled a revolver from my desk side desk and aimed it at the mirror. Fired. Oh, that was the end, dudes. Alright, guys. If you liked it, please hit subscribe, guys, and comment how you like, and see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye!